hot and tired, but I thought I would go through and just show you some of the things that I picked up today in my thrifting haul. And I also went by my friend Corey and I picked up some things from her. She gets a lot of things um, donated to her. She's a single mom and she buys some things also, um, like at some of the bin stores and things like that in uh, Memphis. But she has a lot of things I think that people donate to her. I do on occasion and I'm working on a storage right now. So I'm going to be cleaning out some things that I'm not going to deal with anymore since I don't do clothing. So that's how she gets her things and so she can sell them at really cheap prices, you know, for a dollar or two or whatever. So I'll show you what I got from her. Um, let me show you that first and then I'll show you the thrifting things. Um, some of the things, let me uh, show you this first. The, um, I don't know if you can see it or not, the lighting is not real great today. We've got kind of overcast skies, but I spent a total of $13 and uh, all of the items with the exception of two were a dollar a piece. Um, I've got two items that were three and I'll tell you what those were. Um, the first thing that I got, um, I'll probably take it out of the frame. It's not anything really old or anything like that, but I do, I'm sorry about that there. I do uh, sell a lot of the um, vintage looking prints. And so this is the little girl that's praying. It's Florence Kroger is the original artist that was on it. Um, I got that for a dollar. See if I can find some room here. I'm so crowded. <laughs> I've got so much stuff in here. Why am I out shopping? I don't know. Um, this is one of the three dollar items. Now the painting is it's not very good on it or anything like that. It's not very professional, but it's interesting because it's a fireplace uh, match box holder. You put um, our match holder uh, for the long uh, taper type uh, fire sticks is what they used to call them. Um, but they're the matches. You can um, open this down here. It does need to have a little bit of a repair, but it was interesting because when I opened it up, <clears throat> either the previous, I, I'm assuming the previous owner had um, this little article in here, and apparently this was how they had made this. It came out of workbench, and so I'll just sell it with that. It's got the instructions, but it shows how um, that was put together and things, but they call it a fireside matchbox. And um, so I figured even if somebody wanted to paint over it or they wanted to touch up the stenciling that was already on there, you know, for $3, it would probably be something. I'll probably try and sell that on Marketplace. I don't like to ship things that are chunky and stuff like that um, unless I just have to. Um, I'm at the point in my career that I like to sell the things that are real small, smaller than a bread box. Let's just put it in a poly bag or some type of bubble uh, wrap and, you know, send it on its way to its new home. So that's what I prefer to do. Get a lot of money for the little small stuff. Um, I also had several of these figures. And I'm sorry to go out of camera range, but it is what it is today. These, I paid a dollar a piece for these. I have World of Nintendo Mario. I have the Marvel Deadpool. Again, I'm sorry, it's picking me up twice, it looks like, but you'll get the idea. Um, that's those. This one is Zelda. And then I also have this Zelda. And all of these, I haven't, uh, seems like I looked them up. At one time, it's been a little while since I've scanned some of these, but I know that I'm going to get more than a dollar for them. And those are type things. Um, this is August. Um, I don't know when you're viewing this, but this is August when I'm putting this out. And so um, we're about to enter fourth quarter, and I like to put little toys and things like this, even if there's some of the newer stuff like this, even though I deal primarily in the vintage items. I like to put the newer stuff up, too, because that's what I sell during Christmas. Seemed like I had one other one. Did I have another one? No, I had a little one somewhere. <laughs> oh, oh, here he is. Just trying to escape. This isn't uh, one of the figures. This is a looking glass torch sculpture. This handcrafted glass limited edition. It's a striped tiger shark. And I don't know. Let's see. I can see that a little bit better, but it's got the little tiny shark inside. I may end up giving this to one of my little boys, but. Um, 
got the magnifying glass in the back and you can look at it up close. So I thought that was kind of cool. But that was a dollar. And then the last thing that I got from Corey, I will probably part out. Um, this is in rough shape because she tried to take <laughs> the name off and it would have sold, you know, with the name on it. But she tried to take the name off of the sash here. I'll probably take these pins off and sell them separately, but it's a 1960s um, brownie outfit. Uh, things like this, even if somebody wanted to cover this up with something else, you know, these um, do sell around Halloween time. Um, people like to, you know, dress up as vintage type things sometimes. The little uh, beanie, I'm sorry to say hat, but it's actually a beanie, is a little rough on the inside here. You know, it's got some places like that, and of course I'll disclose all of that. I'm thinking about I've, all of my listings right now. Um, I've sold on lots of different platforms, like up to five or six platforms at a time, and cross-posted and all that. And again, I'm at that point in my career where um, that's not something that's necessary for me. I'm, I'm pretty much retired. This is I do this for my full-time living, um, but my full-time living situation has changed quite a bit in the last couple of years, so I don't really have to work um, this way, but um, this is something that I can sell more of the things that I enjoy, and I don't have to spend as much time doing it, so I've really enjoyed um, finding some of these type of items, and, um, you know, going back to the thrift stores, and kind of going back to my uh, original um, thing, which was eBay all the time. But I am considering going back to Etsy and possibly Macari because there's some things that I could sell on Macari. They've opened up some of their categories and things like that over the last couple of years since I was on there before. So I'll probably start listing some at least on Etsy because that's something that I sell quite well on. So um, something like this would sell there. I also have craft items and things like that that I'll probably sell there. But that's all of Corey. Now, the things that I got at City Thrift, I did look at um, a moment in time, and I went through there, and it was right down the street, so it was convenient. Um, I didn't find anything that I would source there. Now, it probably was, but I just, I was only there about 30 minutes, and I probably could have found a ton of stuff if I had really looked around quite a bit, but I just didn't want to take the time. I had some other things that I needed to do today, so uh, I ended up coming back, but at City Thrift, I did get a few things. Not anything stellar, um, but it's something that's bread and butter type items. I've got a metal lunch box. This is one of the Gee Whiz ones, and I have sold these in the past. This one, um, this was $2.98 on that. That's a little more than I like to pay for something like this, but with it being the happy face on there, I may end up actually keeping this because it's kind of what goes with my uh, business. It, I've got a happy face as uh, part of my logo, so I may end up using that for some of my um, jewelry type things. You know, I keep a uh, acid kit and um, magnifying glass, all of those kind of things, and I could just keep them all in here and just pull out the whole thing instead of trying to assemble that when I get ready to do any of my jewelry. I'm running out of room again. Let's see. Um, I sell quite a bit of the vintage ephemera, the paper items, and I like to get cards and things like that. Now this, you know, it's got a barcode on it, so it's not all that old. Um, but there are some older ones in here, but this is Cleo Wrap. Cleo Wrap um, was a Memphis company, and um, they were a division of, I believe, Gibson Greetings, if I remember right. It wasn't Hallmark, of course, um, but I think it was Gibson, not American Greetings. But anyway, needless to say, I started looking through these, and it has some cute little things in there that I'll use for some of my scrap lots and things like that. And especially if I am going to go back on Etsy, I'll be selling some things, you know, like that, um, where I put out just you know, a variety of cards and things like that, but it did have some down in here once I got to look and let's see if I can find some of them. It had some of the older ones, so it looked like they had combined some of their stuff up one time, but these are, I love these type. Now, these are actually the original Clio, and it's probably older than these that are in here because it appears to be. 
but um, you know they're marked litho on the bottom down here and you're gonna find older ones like that. These are really cute. Um, but unused, I mean, you know, they're gonna sell for a little bit more. Got that type stuff. Um, I do recycle these unless it would sell for more with the envelope, which a lot of times it won't. If I put it into a scrap lot, it definitely doesn't need the envelopes and I use these. So I send my patches first class and um, like trading cards and things like that and so I just take um, some of the chipboard the cardboard chipboard and I just put my uh, thing inside there and just slide it down in there as long as it's under an ounce it'll go first class with one stamp you know, I can stick an extra 15 cent stamp on there if it gets a little heavy but these are pretty You've got pretty colors and there's some doubles and things in there too um, That's all I see readily, so I'm not going to dig too far in there. But anyway, that's what those are. And I think I paid, how much did I pay for you? This one was half off at $2.98, half off of $2.98, so that wasn't too bad. And see on those uh, lots, I'll usually put like 15 to 20 pieces in there. Um, I might put a few other things like vintage buttons with it and things like that so that junk journalists that combine junk um, journaling with uh, scrapbooking and things like that, they like to have different type of media that they put together in their junk journals. And so I'll probably put feathers and, you know, it's all different little things that I put in there. And um, it ends up being about a 25 to 30 um, piece set. And I usually get around 12 to $15 for those. Um, some a little more, some a little less. It depends on what's in there. Um, also found these. Now, it didn't have all of the characters. This is $2.98. This was an orange one, so I did pay the $2.98 for this. Um, that was out of some of those hanging bags. But it's the rubber um, dwarfs. These are newer they are the made in china ones but they are marked disney on the bottom and then i've also got a little tin soldier he's um, a tin soldier that's wood <laughs> wood one so he may go in a junk lot he um actually has a hanger on him so i could sell him as a an ornament but i usually don't do that i'll, I'll kind of lock those up and sell several of those like have some angels in there and things like that so that somebody can get a good deal on something but i've got how many Three, five. I've got five of the dwarfs. So I'll be able to sell those. I also like to pick up children's books. Um, depends on what they are. Now, we know all of the, you know, if you're following the news or reseller or whatever, you know how the Dr. Seuss thing went crazy for a while and people were just, um, crazy out of their minds with what they were paying for different things. Um, this one has a little boo-boo on the front here, and I don't remember that being on there, but it, I probably did that in transport, but it's not going to make any difference. Um, this is not one of the ones that was taken uh, off the shelves or anything like that, but the Dr. Seuss items are selling like hotcakes, and especially as Christmas comes up and people are filling out any type of their... Um, collection on any of these books at 45 cents which is what I pay for any of the children's books at City Thrift and I mean that was a no-brainer on that. Also this is one that I may try to sell in entirety like this even uh, though it's got some issues. Um, it's probably got writing I don't even remember yet. It's got writing inside and all of that. Um, oh Danny. Hello Danny. Um, this one is from 1966, so it's got all the crazy good pictures. I mean, the calico cat, deer dog, calico cat, um, Tweedledum, Tweedledee. I mean, these are just awesome pictures. So, <laughs> I spend a lot of my evenings um, watching either reseller videos or sometimes I watch a movie or whatever like we all do. And I'll get that started, and I've got uh, a TV tray that I work. I've got a little bungalow that I live in now because I, 
my kids were living with me now i'm living with them and i've got this little separate mother-in-law's wing or whatever and it's got a chair and all this kind of stuff and so i put my little workspace in there i don't usually take work home and go you know i keep it out here in, in my garage because i want to keep that separate <laughs> i've uh, spent a whole lot of years working too many hours so i don't want to encourage myself to do that because it's easy to do because i love what i do um but i will set up all of my scissors and all that kind of stuff and because it's something that i can do and just a mindless fashion and I can watch a movie or whatever like that and a lot of these books like this if they don't sell in entirety um, pretty quickly then I cut those up and I make junk journal lots out of them like I was talking about before and so um, these things sell consistently and so if you're not selling these if you're selling uh, vintage items or any type of paper items you really need to look into that because all I do I uh, have like junk drawer number three, junk drawer number four, whatever. I have these gallon Ziploc, and I buy them from everywhere, um, even yard sales or whatever, because it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to be putting food in them or anything like that. I buy these, <clears throat> and I'll mark these um, on the junk journals or whatever, you know, might be the certain category, and I uh, put all of my items in there. I count out so many pieces you know, once I get these cut up and things like that. I also do lots that include um, like sizes in the covers and I'll sell just the covers because they'll use the covers for a junk journal and do other stuff on the inside. So you'd be surprised because something like this, for instance, it might sell an entirety. I might be able to get like $7.99, $8.99 for it, but I could easily by cutting this up and selling the cover which it may take a while on the cover because they're a little bit slower sale. But um, if I cut this up, I could easily get $25, $30 for, for the contents on this. So, you know, it might be something that you might want to look into. Not to tell you how to do your business. I'm just letting you know my experience. Um, I do buy some of the Hallmark and also the Russ and different brands of the little angels and ornaments and things like that. This is a vintage one. Oh, Can you see here? This is Angel Stocking Hanger here. This one's made in Hong Kong. I paid a dollar ninety-eight for her, so I figure I'll probably get about probably about twelve to fifteen for her. I bought this, it may end up with my daughter, I don't know, because she's got kind of a, a bird theme, but it's got the colors like this in her bedroom and things, but um, this turns into a trinket box if you want it to, but it's actually a candle. And this was new, it was just out of the box, you know, it's never been used or anything, but it was $1.91, but I gave half of that. I got that for half, so that's cute, but it's um, porcelain. So there's that. And I've got just one more item. This is Rise and Shine Homemade Biscuits. I actually bought that for myself. I've got a Keurig, a, a cute little apartment size Keurig, and I keep a cup in there. You know, um, it kind of is part of my decor or whatever. I've got one that says Early Bird on it and, you know, things like that. So I kind of got that for myself. But I believe that these came from Hardee's, if I remember right. It was $1.98 on that. But it's Rise and Shine Homemade Biscuits. It's a nice heavy cup, too. Nice size. But it encourages me to drink my coffee. Because I'm a nicer person than I do. I didn't start drinking coffee until I was 52. I wonder what kind of person I was before then. This is I got this, even though it doesn't belong to this year. It's from, what is it, 2007. Mid-South Con, they have that here in Memphis. And, of course, they didn't have it last year um, with 2020 and all the pandemic and all of that. Um, but they are going to have it this next year. And my uh, son-in-law likes to go, and he takes my now 13-year-old. She just turned 13 yesterday, my oldest um, granddaughter. And they like to go on 
um, their gamers and they like to play some of the games. They don't do the ones that are kind of out there. Um, but they um, dress up and the whole thing just like you do at any of the comic book type of things. But I got her that, so I'm going to stick that in with her Christmas. She'll like that. And then another cup in here. What was this one? I forget. Oh, yeah. Shoebox greetings. They usually sell pretty well, and especially at Christmas time. And this was a golf theme one. Okay, here's the plan, Larry. You go in the woods. Bert, you head for the sand trap. And Bob, any place with water. <laughs> but this one is a 19. What was it on? I thought I saw a marking on it. Maybe I didn't. I probably looked it up and got a marking from it. But I would say that my best guess is probably early to mid 2000s. This actually came from Park Avenue Thrift. Now, that was all from City Thrift. And then I made a quick trip to Park Avenue Thrift. And this is one of the Scentsy um, Little Lambs. I sure sat there. This was half price because yellow was the tag of the day, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but they unzip at the back. Still smells good. And you can put your little Scentsy or whatever it is that they call it in there. Those are pretty those sell pretty consistently around fifteen to twenty dollars for that. I don't mind buying I don't buy many tins. It looked at a tired pipe. Or no maybe this one was half off. I think that was a dollar ninety one. I think yellow was the regular price. $1.91. This one was tan. It's marked with a T. You can see it with a T on there, and that means tan. So this was something that had been sitting there a while. This one is Courier and Ives, and it is the flower face. That's what they call it. I wonder why. But that's a pretty tan. Um, actually, things like this do sell at Christmas time. If I start selling them now, people will buy them, and they'll put their Christmas cookies and things like that in it. So, um, some of those things I may try on Marketplace first, and then if they don't sell, I may throw them over there on Macari or something. Roosters, at least in my area, are still hot or hot again. This was two ninety two. It was a green tag, and this is one of the um, hand painted in grease marked on the back. It does have a place that you can put the hooks in there and hang it. So you can put like wire uh, hooks. And it's dirty and needs to be clean. Anyway, got that. Those usually sell for around 15 also. And final item. I don't know why I picked these up. I just thought they might sell, especially with the holidays coming up. Um, it's the Star of David Floating Wax Candles. They have not been used, although this has a lot of shelfware. And, of course, they've got that on there, so I've got to try and get that off. That was $0.99, cents and I paid half because it was a tan. Let's see. It's hard to tell in the packaging, but it's the Star of David. It's on there. They're all packaged and they haven't been used or anything like that. So, that one you can see a little bit better. Maybe. I figured that's good for maybe five bucks or something like that. So, that completes everything today. I am tired. I come from a long line of um, wheeler dealers, I guess you could call it. And so this is kind of a, a natural osmosis for me to go into this business, although I've been in several businesses over the years. But this is my favorite one, and it's probably because my grandfather, that only had a third grade education, he was from Houston, Mississippi, he was a wheeler dealer, and he would come home with all kinds of stuff and throw my grandmother into a tizzy trying to get everything done, you know, as far as like shucking corn and everything else. He was always good at that. Well, my dad, and he was first born. Well, my dad was first born. And uh, <laughs> he was a wheeler dealer too. 
fact, there was this one time that um, he was coming home from work. He worked at Kellogg's. I'm a Kellogg's kid. They called us Fruit Loops and, and Flakes. So <laughs> I don't know if I was a Flake or a Fruit Loop or what I still am. But he came home from work one day, and as he was coming home and coming through the neighborhood that was next to ours, there was a truck sitting on the side of the road, and it was like mid-60s, 68 or something like that, old truck. And he thought, hmm, and he, it had a for sale sign on it. And so he goes up, and he knocks on the door, and he says, how much you want for your truck? And the man says, well, he says, it needs a transmission. He says, but I've got a transmission in the back. And he says, I'll take 500 for it. That's Pulls out his wallet. And he peels off the money because he always had money with him. He bought the truck and it was running, but it needed a new transmission. So he goes home and walks over there because it was only just a few blocks, you know. He walks over there and he drives the other truck home, pulls it up in front of the house. So he goes inside and he had worked the first shift that day. And so he goes inside and he was getting in there and he was kind of like Elvis he liked peanut butter and banana sandwich and stuff like that so he got in there and was fixing himself a sandwich and he hears not 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 on the door and he thought maybe it was the other guy you know had followed him home or something like that he didn't know what was going on he goes and there was a guy down the street and he says hey you get a new truck he says yeah I just brought it home this that and the other he said I, I don't think I'm gonna keep it though he says it needs a transmission he said, but I got the transmission in the back of the truck. And he says, you do? He said, man, I've been looking for a truck. And I've been looking for one just like this. I love the color. It was green, I think, or whatever. I just, all of this kind of stuff. And the end of the story is that he ended up not doing anything but driving that truck home and used that little bit of gas that was already in it, um, bringing it home. And he ended up selling that truck, I think, for 1700 or something like that to this guy. <laughs> with the transmission and so the guy drives it home and he was happy as he could be so my dad was quite the wheeler dealer and um, I'm thankful for uh, him giving me that incentive I'm, I'm able to kind of spot a deal when I see one so I uh, want to throw that out there and, and tell my dad I appreciate you today <laughs> thanks for joining me I appreciate you joining me and um, it's good to be back this is my first video back and I don't know when, and hopefully I'll be able to continue the pattern. Um, things have settled down somewhat in our world, and um, hopefully in our private world they have as well, and so I'll be able to get um, back to making some videos and things like that. I got myself a new GoPro, so I'm going to try and see if I can figure all of that out. I haven't used that technology yet. I usually use my phone or my computer like I am today. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. If you have not subscribed to my channel, I wish you would do so. And just click that uh, bell next to the subscribe button and you'll get all notifications of when I upload any videos. It's good to see you. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Happy junkin'.